So in the last video, we built this basic example of a metal detector where individuals uh, pass through a metal detector and possibly are selected for screening and then recycle back through the metal detector uh, possibly a large number of times. Where we left that example off, I had cranked up the likelihood for uh, them to be selected for screening on the first pass uh, and, um, and that generated a lot more queuing up. So in other words, because there was a lot more people being selected for rescreening, there were more people showing up in the queue for extra screening here, and there probably were more people showing up in this queue over here. So in this model, um, what I'd like to do is to add to that uh, variable arrival schedules and variable capacity schedules to give you an example of how to do that in Arena. So what the reason I might want to do this is I might think that there is a slow period and a fast period in the, uh, throughout the day, and I need to simulate during the fast period there being more arrivals per unit time. And in the uh, fast period, I might also want uh, the system to respond so that I have more capacity during that time. So I have more screeners working, for example. So if I go to this passengers arrive, I see that right now it's being modeled as a random exponential with a mean of one. That it means that it has a mean of one minute in between every arrival. Now, there's a schedule option. And if I select that, I can then create an arrival schedule. I click OK. If I then find the schedule data module in the basic process panel, I see that arrival schedule showed up here. And, uh, and ideally, uh, so then I'll right click on that and I will click edit via dialog. And in this arrival schedule, um, you know, it's type arrival. Um, and these time units we'll get into in just a second what that means. But I can create basically a list of durations um, that during that duration of time, we had a uh, different number of arrivals per hour. This is one of the weird things about Arena. I don't know if it goes back to a weird thing about Simian, but it's also um, part of the reason why there's this scale factor thing, which I'm not going to get into here. But when you, so when you specify an exponential alone, naked, not in a schedule, inside an arrival process, you specify its mean. The mean in between the number of arrivals, you do not specify its scale or its rate. In the schedule, you do specify its rate. And not only that, regardless of what your base time units are in the run menu, in the run setup replication parameters, and regardless of what time units are here, the units for the rates of these arrival rates are always in per hour units. So you have to convert whatever arrival rate you want into a per hour unit. And there's a way to use the scale factor to do that, or you can manually do that. All right, now I can click Add, and I can create an arrival rate. And then they should, they should remind you this is in per hour. And I might say that for, and as a reminder, when we built this thing, we said that we were running nine hour days. So we can save maybe for the first two hours of the day, then I receive um, six and, uh, 60 passengers per hour. And then I can say, for the next five hours of the day, maybe I receive 100 passengers per hour. Oh, 100 for three. For the next three hours of the day, I receive 100 passengers per hour. So that's five. And then I might just for simplicity say for the last four hours of the day, um, I actually receive only 30 passengers per hour. And I have my schedule here. And I'm going to show you how to use this file name after we've done this for both schedule and capacity. Okay, now for extra screening. I can also do something similar for the resource capacity. If you remember, when you go through extra screening, they need one unit of security agents. So if I go to the resources data module under basic process, I see security agent, and I see that it has a fixed capacity. 
I'm going to change that fixed capacity to based on schedule. And then for schedule name, I am going to type in a schedule called uh, agent schedule. All right. So I can now go to the schedule data module and I see agent schedule shows up there. It's a type capacity. If I right click on it and say edit via dialog, I get something uh, similar to, um, to what we had before. And um, in particular, what I find uh, is that um, I can still set my durations to hours, but of course the values are going to be capacities now. They're not going to be rates. So I can say that maybe during the first four hours of the day, we only have uh, one checker. And then for whatever reason, uh, they could only afford, you know, the schedule. So for the next three hours of the day, we have two checkers. And then for the last two hours of the day, um, we go back down to one checker. Okay. So um, if I were to run this thing, it looks a lot like it used to. Um, but if I were to, um, you know, say, pause it here, um, hopefully what we would end up finding is that we will get less queuing than we did um, in the previous one um, in those times of day when we had more screeners. So what our hope is, um, is that if I fast forward this, as I'm doing now, and end up looking at the data after it's done running, then what I might find is that the uh, distribution that I got at the end of the previous video is now going to look very different because I have um, uh, you know, variable arrival rates as well as variable capacities. Now, um, each of these replications is taking much longer, and that's because I have more events being generated because I have more resources. So there are um, extra resources here, and those extra resources, that means that in the event calendar that's behind the scenes in Arena, it has to keep track of when um, either resource are idle or busy. And, um, and so because there's two resources, that's you know, double the events. And then on top of that, it has to deal with the logic of figuring out uh, what you know, time of day it's in and then switching back through that. And so um, that is, you know, one of the reasons why um, we are, you know, over this amount of time, we've only gone to, you know, almost through the fifth replication. So when I do this with files, I'll probably change this to only run one replication, um, just, uh, just so we can run it once and see what the difference is. All right, so it's almost done. It's nearing the end of the fifth replication. So if I go back and look at the Excel spreadsheet, I still have, this is what it looked like before. So this is just the value added time. So we see we get these peaks and so on. So close that. And if I were to go back and open that up, And I'm highlighting just the, uh, I'll just do the value added time for replication one. So again, we're looking at all of the times for passengers as they exited replication one. So let's look at an Excel, an Excel generated histogram and see if it looks any difference. And I'm not saying it definitely will, um, but, um, but it's just a possibility that we might end up seeing some differences. All right, so I don't know, I don't remember what bin width I set on the previous one. So we still see that it uh, has a lot of similarity to the previous one. Um, but um, I get the feeling that it may be a little more flattened out in different regions. And so it doesn't quite have the sharpness that the other one did. Um, maybe perhaps because the number of arrivals 
um, are changing, and so um, whether there's queuing or not may be changing, and um, and the number of uh, agents checking is also changing. If I were to instead look at the passage times where queuing is more important, because it's including uh, more of that queuing time, then let's see if we insert the histogram, and then try a different bin size, then these interestingly set bin sizes from Excel. Um, it looks pretty spread out, uh, you know, similar to before, but I would say that there's probably a much stronger peak here than we had in, in the previous examples. All right, but that wasn't the main point. It was mainly to just show you how to use uh, those schedules. So now the last thing I want to do is how to show you how you can read those schedules from a file. All right, so um, I am going to just change the number of replications to one here just to make it simpler. All right, now in the schedules down here, uh, you may have noticed that when I edited uh, the schedule here, it had a list for file name. So what I could do instead of putting these durations here is I can actually go into the advanced process panel and then I can click on file and I can create a new file and I'll call this uh, arrival schedule file and I'm going to edit this with a dialog arrival schedule file and I'm going to say this file is I could even make it a pure old Microsoft Excel file and uh, I will then go back and do Excel and I will create a new file that in its two columns is just going to have a column of those arrival rates which are again in these per hour units and so uh, 60, 120, say 35, 60 for three hours, 120 for five hours, 35 for one hour and I need to remember this is from A1 to uh, B3 and you'll see why I need to remember that in a second. So I'm going to save that somewhere. So uh, arrival schedule. Just going to put that in a junk folder here. Make sure that went there. Yep. Okay. Um, now if I go back into Arena, and I can then choose that file desktop, arrival, oh, desktop, test, arrival schedule. And now under record sets, I need to create a record set which tells Arena where to look in the file. So I'll call this arrival sched and I will say A1, B3. And then I can click OK. And so now if I go back to the basic process and schedule and I look at the arrival schedule if I edit that via dialog I can under file name I can say arrival schedule file and the record set I can say arrival sched and it will then read in those values that I had previously put in that grid into this arrival schedule And, um, and then if I were to run this, um, it should hopefully um, run without any errors. And so it's running the exact same way. But now I can actually go in and edit the files in uh, that spreadsheet. And every time I go into that spreadsheet um, and edit those files and then rerun this uh, arena model, then it will update those. But you just have to be careful because that record set is only going to look at those first three rows. So if you expand it beyond there, you'll have to adjust that record set. All right, so the only other thing that I want to show you about schedules is you may have noticed that in when you don't specify with a file, uh, your schedule shows up not only, like so if I 
right clicked on this and said edit via dialogue, it shows up here in these durations. But also, um, it shows up uh, with this edit via spreadsheet. And so that is another way that you can get into these. All right. So um, that is a brief introduction of uh, one of the ways that you can make use of schedules in terms of arrival schedules and capacity schedules, how you can load them in manually into Arena, and how you can also uh, pull them in from a file.